Hey guys, good evening to everyone, and thanks for joining. So, morning mm -hmm. started Fortigate firewall demo. So, we were discussing about a dashboard. So, dashboard is not completed yet. So, whatever wherever we stopped from there, we will continue. So, morning we discussed up to port view sessions. So, we will continue from top threads. So, before our uh, session is starting, so then I clicked on the top threads. So this is the top threads dashboard. So what exactly it, it, it contains? So what are threat it is coming to the respect to firewall level? So that may be inbound traffic or outbound traffic. So entire organization level, what a threat it is coming to the respect to inbound traffic wise, outbound traffic wise. So it can show in this particular dashboard. So now you can see here th top threats by threat score. So the threat score is depending on the combined sessions. It is not a for a single session. It's a combination of combined session. So maximum it went up to 20,000 plus. Okay. You can see here blocked connection. So firewall is blocked whenever end user are trying to access malicious activity. So that malicious activity may be websites or maybe trying to download something from the internet or maybe through phishing email attachments, downloading and so on. So that blocked connections it is showing and the threat level is a high. So overall threat score, it is not for a single session, entire score, it is 60,420 and the maximum number of sessions for all those blocked connections, it is 1,107. Okay, if I'm clicking on this particular activity, then you will come to know what is the source and what the destination. So from where the, from where to where these connections are going on. Let's go on. So when I clicked on that particular on blocked connections activity, you can see a summary of the overall whatever threats it is received. So blocked connection and threat category also once again blocked connection. Threat level is a high category. Threat score is uh, for enter combined everything. So uh, that is two lakh or two forty seven, two forty six k. Next one is sessions, 4,100 sessions. And Fortigate Firewall is a primary, obviously you know this one. So there are different types of threat scores we have. It's a low, medium, high, critical. Okay, so, sorry guys. Yeah, it is a low, medium, high, critical. So these are all the threat scores. Okay, based on severity wise. Now we can see from source to destination. So these are all the source related. So which source is caused or blocked the respective activity? Porti demo dot data center corporation porti demo dot com. So this particular thing it's blocked so many things. So the threat score is twenty nine thousand eight eighty. And maximum number of sessions is a blocked activity is 498. And after that, another source is trying to do some of the malicious activity. And it is a threat score is 13,920 and so on. So in such a way, so each and every source wise, it is provided the information at destinations wise from where to where that particular connection is going on. So from this one is destinations wise, even country wise also that activity is happening from which country. When the user is trying to access from which country application that is provided based on the ISP router, we'll come to know which activity. So you can see here, these are all the destinations they are trying to access. So next one is a country region. So based on the different types of wherever that respective destination is located. So those country we can identify and finally sessions. So overall number of sessions also it can seen. That is nothing but 4,100 sessions. So most of the activity, it is coming from Canada and USA. Okay. So this, this is about overall top threats. So top threats, only one category. That category name is blocked connections. Meaning when the user of the Portigate company, they are trying to access respect to applications in the websites. So it is blocked that particular activity. Not only just applications, that activity may be through driver downloads or through phishing email, malware attachments, or any activity. So that is about top threats. 
next one is ssl vpn monitor uh, whatever vpn it is a configured in the portgate side so we have seen morning there are two types of vpns configured that is ipsec vpn that is not ssl vpn so ipsec vpn it's a configured is a google cloud platform one of the vpn second one secure by design so these are the two vpns it is configured but ssl vpn they did not configure anything that's why we are not able to see any information related to ssl vpn next one is a port view applications meaning here so whatever applications they are trying to access in the portnet company so all those applications information it can be provided so that may be http based related applications that may be port mail related applications that may be related to outlook related applications so morning we have seen right application bandwidth one of the dashboard so here when the user is a trying to access when the external people they are trying to access so that category wise it is provided so first you can see here it is a graphical representation next one is applications which application is causing more bandwidth and so on so based on the bytes wise it is a uh, ascending order it is provided so first one is syslog even we we have seen morning also so syslog is occupying more okay 2.26 gigabytes next one is a tcp 541 it is occupying next high top one next one is http based related traffic nothing but web traffic next one is file transfer related thing next one server message block messaging part next one is one drive so in their organization they are using one drive as well related to microsoft office 365 and dns related configurations and so on so these are all the top applications they are using in their organization level okay so that is about the port view application side so you can see here based on the ascending order it is provided Uh, next one is port view destinations so destinations here which destination is consuming more bandwidth so destination wise so from which uh, ip address okay so which ip address it is consuming more based on destination wise so source to destination this particular dashboard is created dedicated to destination wise okay so that particular uh, applications wise we can see that bandwidth as well nothing but which destination is consuming more bandwidth so once again same thing it is based on either ascending order or descending order it can show that particular representation you can see yeah, this is the first destination 172.30.72.98 it's within the organization itself so syslog server it is causing more bandwidth so that is 565.64 next one is one of the google cloud so that is second destination it's a combination of both internal applications as well as external destinations as well so so next one is a google cloud related application it is occupying more bandwidth that is 76.68 so which application is causing more bandwidth go to please mute yourself unfortunately some disturbance okay so that is on the destinations wise here okay previous one is a completely application point of view wise which application is causing more bandwidth even you can we can create one more dashboard also can you tell me which is the dashboard we can create so now we have seen port view applications application wise more bandwidth utilization next one is port view destination wise more bandwidth utilization one more we can create a dashboard what is dashboard based on these two you can say did you understand my question so port view applications can provide the overall application wise bandwidth utilization port view destinations can provide the destination wise bandwidth utilization in similar way we can create one more dashboard what is that user user source. user source that's right answer source wise port view sources also so which source is consuming more bandwidth that one also we can create even user also we can create so that is that is the next dashboard also we can create but unfortunately they did not create that one okay port view websites so nothing but here which websites
access. So what are the applications or websites? So that information we can see here. So we can see even sessions as well in the form of, I think, a graphical representation. So we can see graphical representations as well as all the Portinet company employees. Okay, what type of application they are trying to access? You can see here, Microsoft is a number one. It's a part of categories information technology. Okay, uh, Bytes is a 245.37. Next one is Windows update, nothing but patch update is happening. Category of this Windows patch updates is information technology. Next one, MSN.com, it's a search engine from Microsoft once again. Category is a search engine related. Next one, live.com. So this is the next website in the Portinet company they are trying to access more. So that is once again search engine. Microsoft online, information technology wise. So that is next one, Amazon website, AmazonAWS.com. Next one, Google, and so on. So these are all the websites in the Portinet company wherever this firewall is deployed. So according to the websites or applications wise, we are able to see this particular information. Okay. So everything is a dashboard only. IP address management. IP address management, in short, we will call it IPAM. You know already. So we discussed under DNS, DHCP, and IP address management. Meaning here, how we are uh, uh, we are managing the IP addresses. Okay, so currently it is not showing anything. So nothing but they did not configure any information related to dashboard. Next one, IPsec monitor. So IPsec monitor already we have seen. This is maybe tenth time or fifteenth time we are seeing this particular tab. So this is a Google Cloud Platform VPN. They created one thing. Second one is uh, secure by design. One more uh, VPN they created. And also it is showing yes, how much bandwidth utilization. So you can see Google Cloud, Google Cloud Platform, it is uh, accessing very less bandwidth as compared to secure by design related interface bandwidth utilization. Next one is a device inventory. So nothing but whatever devices, it is identified by Portinet firewall. So morning also we have seen around uh, uh, 192. So now you can see it is reduced that particular count, meaning some of the devices maybe it is offline. Okay. So device inventory based on the operating system or hardware wise, sorry, hardware wise, vendor wise. So number one is a VMware, it is a 45 count. Number two is a Portinet, it's a 12 count. Number three is a Dell related vendor. Number four is a Supermicro, fifth is a trip trip light, and sixth one is Samsung. So these are all the hardware devices that they deployed in the data center of the Portinet company in California location. Because this particular device is deployed in the California. So this is the this is the pie chart, and this pie chart is representing based on the software operating system wise. This is based on the vendor wise. This is based on the operating system wise. Number one is other identity, nothing but it's not able to identify which operating system. Other means we are not sure. It's like anonymous. Uh, next to high priority one is a Windows one. Next one is a port OS, like a port switches, port application point, I mean access points, port routers, uh, port email, and so on. Uh, next one is Linux servers. Next one, port email, once again, Android. Status, one is online. Second one is offline one. Interfaces, through which interfaces these particular devices are identified. So, each and every day. so according to now hardware wise first one is avian technologies that particular mac address it's a linux server so that particular mac address of the device and also server ip address next one is a dell operating system okay so dell vendor wise in the similar way microsoft in the similar port in wise and so on so nothing but based on the vendor wise classifications so we no need to do any classifications once you are deploying the port in firewall we have to enable which protocol if you want to identify the host network or device network devices which protocol we have to enable which protocol it will identify the host discovery 443 443 which protocol dhcp 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 identify the allocation of the ip address okay. We discussed even in Nessus tool also this one, host discovery. 
network discovery which protocol syslog 514 that is logs i am asking about network discovery which protocol we have to enable snmp yes snmp that's right answer simple network management protocol port number 161 did we discuss this one in the nessus tool or not yes sir yes yes we did so under the policy creation part so back end discovery it will is a ping command snmp command tcp three way handshake erp protocol icmp protocol udp i told all this is a back end process did you remember yes sir yes. here also snmp protocol if are enabling so how many versions are there community strings of the snmp 3 sir 3 community string of snmp what are those community strings session 1 and session 2 are plain test session 3 will okay. be of uh, uh, what do you call uh, encrypted encrypted test, test. Encrypted that's right test. yeah snmp version and snmp version 2 it is a completely plain text username and password and snmp version 3 is a community related to private as well as it is a encrypted text right now in the every company we are using snmp version 3 that's right answer yeah so if we are enabling this one automatically devices will be identified so nothing but back end mechanism is snmp okay that is overall devices whatever wherever this firewall deployed so they enabled snmp so and after that so it is will identify automatically network discovery part port view destination interfaces so here how the traffic is going on through which interfaces first of all what are the interfaces it is configured and each and every interface how much bandwidth it is utilizing so wan uplink so it is the internal or internet or dmz wan uplink wan wan interface is internal or internet 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 internet, internet. internet. that's right wan up the wide area network so it is a internet bandwidth is a more okay so nothing but most of the traffic is going from inbound to outbound so most of the end users they are trying to access the public network nothing but internet they are trying to access so number of sessions 18 and bandwidth utilization in the similar way second interface is a data center firewall third interface is fsa dmz dmz interface so next one is a p22 next one is isfw internal firewall one second high availability interface next one is meru wireless lan controller wlc means wireless lan controller so it's for wifi traffic they are using okay this is one of the interface but sessions are very less on bandwidth utilization also very only one session it is running on so this based on the destination interfaces wise okay so all these are dashboards only once again port view sources port view sources it can represented by bytes once again whatever sources it is integrated and it is identified by the portinet firewall or portigate firewall so now we can go and we can see what is the porti source along with each and every source how much bandwidth utilization it is occupying so that bandwidth utilization we can see here so from morning onwards whatever we discussed everything is showing as bandwidth utilization only okay most of the dashboards they configured so bandwidth utilization only you can see in a, now source this is the source one and uh, this particular mac address next one is a ba bandwidth nothing but bytes utilization okay how many number of bytes and also bandwidth utilization so these are all the end user systems basically okay all these are end user systems so based on the source wise all these are internal ips nothing but internal employee they are trying to access external related <coughs> external related respect to internet and so on okay so that is the respect if you are going and if you are checking here it will show device ip address mac address next one is in which interface that particular traffic is going on to outside what is the hardware and what is the os version okay so everything we can see here 
can anyone say what is this one by seeing this one what did you observe you can are you able to see one more screen is coming here yes ip address yeah from which device is this one firewall which firewall whether whatever demo firewall is something else demo firewall only high wall multi firewall no wrong what is the demo firewall model number what is demo firewall model number 2000 e 2000 e 2000 e but what is the hardware device it is showing here 300 e so whether it between two different models uh, high availability will work no sir no sir And how do no, you say that so it is a high availability model firewall so it is nothing but isfw you can see here so they name it conventions they given isfw nothing but internal firewall in the data center level they are using two perimeter firewalls two internal firewalls so this is internal firewall is it clear now that internal firewall model number is 300e so what are firewall we are using 2000e so that is primary firewall we are using so nothing but so one of the interfaces the integrated with even 300e as well internal firewall also okay so that is the meaning in this similar way if you are going and if you are clicking on now you can see high availability so the secondary firewall this is the primary firewall of internal firewall this is secondary firewall of internal firewall okay what are firewall we are using a perimeter how many uh, what are the different types of firewalls perimeter and internal yes now it's no you now we understood right what is the difference is theoretical and practical so in their organization wherever this firewall deployed perimeter level they are using two firewalls internal also they are two using two firewalls total how many firewalls four firewalls so internal firewalls model number is 300e perimeter level firewall model number is 2000e so that's what you should understand okay so next one yeah this is same same thing it is repeating yeah same thing it is repeating so they integrated several firewalls to this particular device yeah you can see everywhere same interface it is coming so that means they integrate so many firewalls to this particular uh perimeter firewall so this based on source wise now how much bandwidth it is utilizing and uh, dhcp monitor even firewall can monitor dhcp as well so what is the respect to ip address i am not sure whether they enable yes they enable so total right now so it is leasing to three uh, three uh, devices so the three devices are so this is the first device desktop device next one this is the device next one this is the three device so right now so d portnet firewall is giving dhcp leasing to three devices so so those three devices are this one interface information also they provided okay host information also so this is the first host so desktop device next one port switch next one is metropolis so these are all the three different types of devices okay one is workstation or server one is desktop they given ip address leasing second is they given one of the ip address leasing to port switch third one is host name uh, sorry metropolis it's one of the tool basically so port view policies so what are policies so we are configuring so this is dashboard only but we will not configure policies are here where we will configure policies implementations where we will do it firewall policies which tab we can go on to policies or rules implementation or configurations policy and objects yes policies and objects tab that's correct so here now what is this dashboard this dashboard is representing so which policy is consuming more bandwidth so most of the dashboards as i said so they configured based on bandwidth wise okay so dns is consuming more bandwidth so nothing but they created one of the policy in is dns i will show you practically van dsfw they created one more policy and next one is uh, 
IS data center. That is one of the policy. Next one is uh, FSA management virtual IP address. One more policy. So there are a couple of policies taken configured. What is the last policy for every firewall? Implicit denial. What is the last policy or rule in every firewall? Implicitly, implicit denial. Yes. Implicitly? Deny. 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 Is it correct or not? Are you able to see now? Yes, sir. Yeah, so that is what you can compare with theoretical. Now, IPsec monitor. So, IPsec monitor we have seen already, it is repeated. So, whether IPsec monitor anything they configured here? Yes, what are the two different types of IPsec monitor they configured? VPN. One is Google Cloud. Yes. Security design, SDB. Yeah. Uh, Port TV application, it is repeating once again. You can see Port TV application, it is showing here also. Port TV application showing here also. Nothing but two times they created this particular dashboard. So this is about overall dashboards. So only dashboards, we spent more than two and a half hours. Actually, dashboards is complete. We will not create these many dashboards. Just for demo purpose, they created so many dashboards. But most of the cases in the organization level, We'll create it only maybe more than maybe 10 to 15 in between. That's all. Whatever critical traffic it is coming, those dashboards only we will create. So out of these, everything, whatever we discussed. So what is the important tab, guys? Which one is important tab? Security. Yeah, security. And second one? Second one? In this one. One is security, second one? Network. Users and devices. Test. Users and devices, okay. Any other? Test. Top sessions. Text. Top threats. Top threats. Top threats. Top yeah, top threats because what are threats are coming to our nations? We have to monitor that one also. Top threats and security, these are all the two important tabs. Normally, we re will monitor regularly. Okay. So that is about overall dashboard. So dashboard, it's just for to identify what's going on, which application is consuming more bandwidth, which sources consuming more bandwidth, which destinations consuming more bandwidth, which applications consuming more bandwidth. Uh, next one, which interface is consuming more bandwidth. So they created so many dashboards. So that is it. We it is only providing overall what's what's going on, what's happening. That's what we will monitor on the dashboard side. Next one is a network tab. So in the network tab, first one is interfaces. Now we can see these interfaces are, okay. So 2000D model number. Are you able to see these interfaces? It's a combination of both RJ45 as well as uh, even optical interfaces as well. Okay. Morning, I have shown, right? So data sheet as well. So this is the Portigate 2000DA dashboard. So these are all the interfaces. One is management interface and one is uh, pen drive. So something backup you want to configure. So we will use a pen drive as well. And couple of things are uh, high availability interfaces, remaining all interfaces. One of the interfaces we have to configure to switch. One of the interfaces we have to give to proxy. One of the interface we have to give to IDS IPS devices. One of the inter interface we have to give to ISP router. One of the interface we have to give to web application firewall in such a way. Every interfaces we have to configure and we have to give. We have to connect basically. Give means connect here. So now coming back here. So whatever this particular dashboard it is showing. So once again, buffer started. So here you can see management one and management two. So one, two, three, and so on up to how many we have? 38 interfaces we have. So all those 38 interfaces, it's not a mandatory to configure. In case if you want to integrate or you want to configure interfaces, yes, we can do that one also. So these interfaces are combination of both RJ45 as well as even optical interfaces also. 
RJ45 it will support up to 100 gig, not 100 gig. So yeah, 1 gig or 10 gig. So more than 10 gig we will use for optical fiber interfaces. OK, so now coming back. So here, how can we monitor which interface is up and which interface is down? Anyone? How can we say that which interface is up or which interface is down? By seeing this one. See, you are working for maybe a German bank and you are sitting in India. You are a part of Wipro company. So maybe sometimes the device interface cable, physical cable connection. It's a completely maybe rat it went or snake it went to a data center. Maybe it has bitten that particular interface or maybe loose connection it is there. That particular because of the loose connection, that interface is completely out. How can we go and we can identify in that scenario? Will you go to German bank data center and you can see whether uh, Wipro company will send it to German to mm -hmm. check only that particular interface? Yeah. No, in, in NMS, we can check the status is up or down. Yes, in NMS, we can do network management system. It's like a knock tool, also, we can verify that is one thing. Here, also, we can see actually it is buffering. That's why I asked this question. Whatever interfaces we configured, that interface it will show like a green color. Whatever interface is down, it will show like a red color. Red. Yeah. Whatever interface it's like ash color, that is nothing but it's not at configured. So based on the color code wise, we can identify which interface down. Is it clear now? So example port number one is configured as a green color, configured something and showing as a green color meaning here. That interface doesn't have any issue. It's working fine. Maybe it's a red color. That means that interface some issue is there. Now we have to go and we have to troubleshoot whether loose connection is there or maybe some configuration related issues are there. If any loose connection is available, it is completely disconnected. In that scenario, traffic will not pass from inbound to outbound and also outbound to inbound. So always whatever interface is configured it should be active and also it should be online and it should not show any green color sorry red color it's like a health checkup basically health checkup of the interfaces so by seeing this one we'll come to know what the interfaces are configured and so on okay yeah uh, that is and here it will show that particular overall representation part and down it will show which interfaces are configured interface one or interface two interface three interface four and so on and each and every interface also we have to enable ping command whether that particular interface up or down to verify okay so even uh, that particular interfaces we can do packet capture also packet capture so i have one question now Packet capture can be enabled for all the interfaces or only a couple of interfaces. PCAP. PCAP is nothing but packet capture. So packet capture can be enabled for every interfaces or couple of interfaces or some of the interfaces. You can enable in input and out. Input and output. What is mean by exactly input and output? Inbound, outbound. So that means every interface we, we, we have to enable? No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any other answer? We have to interface with a bunch of uh, ports. No, we have to enable only for internet traffic. Whatever traffic is going to outside. So see, interfaces. Even WAN interface, WAN is nothing but public interface, nothing but the traffic is going on outside. Whatever internet related interfaces are there, for those things we have to enable packet capture. Why? Anyone can explain what is the reason? So if you are enabling packet capture for every interface, then whatever device model number you purchased is not sufficient. Why? Because packet capture file is maybe one meg also sometimes. Every packet capture if you are doing for every interface, it will 
packet capture that payload as well as source ip destination ip message and content of the body so it contains maybe 500 kb or 200 kb or 300 kb so continuously that inbound traffic and outbound traffic will come if we are enabling for every interface that packet capture then whatever device model number you purchase it is not at all sufficient because it will store everything in the water hardware model so that's why it's better to use always for outgoing interface nothing but internet related facing interfaces those things we have to enable so what is the reason why we have to enable only for internet facing related interfaces sometimes you will miss connections to check the connections tcp so connection can, even for internal also we can miss the connections even internal also tcp three way handshake will not complete in between source and destination maybe transport layer issue maybe application layer issue maybe data link layer issue maybe physical layer issue also cable issue why because most of the attacks will come from internet most of the attacks will come cyber attacks will come from internet so as i said very beginning also at the time of demo itself nowadays 90% of the attacks will come through only internet inside the threats are very 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 less inside the inside the threats maybe morning uh, someone is asking like uh, someone is uh, wants to delete the data or code in that scenario how can we trace that particular activity so that is one type of insider threat even someone is copying through pen drives or sending the mails from personal to professional as a data leak prevention data leak that is insider threats for insider threats it will be less as compared to external attack related threats so most of the 90% of the attacks will come from the internet only like a cyber attacks in that scenario whenever any attack will come and if you want to do deep investigation so for troubleshooting purpose debugging purpose fixing the issue or fixing the respective problem we need so only for internet facing related packet packet capture so then we'll go and we'll identify where is the exact issue how that particular attacker it has entered into the organization level what the payload and so on that's why it's better to have always for internet facing related interfaces it's we have to enable the packet capture so here all those interface whatever interfaces it is configured all those interfaces we can see here and also we can see the ip address and mac address additionally even we can see the so what of the what is the different types of service it is enabled whether http or https or ping or icmp and so on so sir can i share my screen yes please 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 uh, just share uh, sir what is your name uh naresh sir naresh um one second your video also on i think naresh sir naresh is is worst name is rk14024 sir rk rk14024 okay One four zero two four. Yes, you can share now. Nareesh, are you? Uh, can you share your screen? Mm -hmm. sir actually okay. i have opened in my lappy sir lappy only just you can click on share screen down is an option is available right green color button share screen share screen okay sir click on share screen microsoft microsoft no, no, no. zoom uh, meeting only button. zoom meeting only zoom meeting. click on share screen yeah Hi sir, can I share my screen? 
yes anyone is fine so who's that what is the your number nasimun only nasimun i think you recharge so much of data in my, even in your mobile also great yes you can yeah nasimun carry on okay thank you so much yeah so here you can see this is what i am saying for every interface fine narish thank you so much thanks for your support yeah so you can see here now so i think uh, port number 4 is uh, green color right 36 also green color 38 also green color yeah so these are all the interface are green, green color that means those interfaces is a configured as a so nothing but these are all the interface are configured and it is active now it's clear right whatever theoretical is i mean whatever explained before so h link it is indicating sir h link h link h link high availability i think they did not configure some, i mean whatever inbuilt it is supporting one of the interface they configured is high availability you can see it down ha port 1 down physical interfaces so as i said even whatever by default ha interface you can configure that one also if are not interested whatever by default interface is providing by the tool or uh, hardware device in that scenario even one of the interface whatever 38 interfaces are there right those interfaces also we can configure as a ha interface that's why one of the deployment method i told you as a ha is it clear yeah yes sir yeah whatever by default ha they provide interfaces we can configure that one also otherwise whatever 38 interface in this scenario it is showing even one of the interface we can configure ha as well okay now you can see what are green color symbols are there. not green color symbol color code is there those color codes are completely active interfaces those interfaces are configured is there any red color interface no sir no yeah. yes. so that means yeah there are no issues but some of the ash color also we can see nothing but they are not at all configured sometimes what will happen some of the interfaces they will configure but physical cable connection they will not give those interfaces also it will show like a red color only okay so now come down so little bit up little bit up yeah little bit up 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 not down up yeah uh, only this one i think aggregated interface also will be there go up 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 no 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 you are going down i think go up once again once again yeah you can see sfw agg 802.3 ad it's a aggregate interface what is mean aggregate interface several interfaces we can configure as a single interface example i can configure 1 to maybe 16 1 to 16 all those interfaces i can make a aggregate interface as well aggregation is nothing but summing up all these right so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 up to 16 group so i can agree like a grouping that's correct grouping the interface that is called aggregation so that one we can represent using 802.3 ad it's a one of the ieee standard i think so yeah uh so that is a dedicated interfaces that name also it is given next one physical interfaces so down we have physical interfaces so ha port 1 ha port 2 management ip address management 2 ip address port 4 so all these interfaces it is configured come down little bit wan interface it is configured so come down so many interfaces it is configured i want to see uh, whether any services it is enabled or not could you please go a little bit uh, right hand side could you please go to a little bit right hand side yeah this is what i am saying so administrator interfaces each and every interfaces what are services we have to enable so i was explaining right previously so whether ping should be required or not https is required or not ssh is required or not 
why we have to enable all these in case example something is going down as i said one person going traveling from india to german it's very difficult so we can go and we can troubleshoot directly through remotely okay so using ping command if i'm enabling ping command then only we can ping that particular interface otherwise we cannot ping that particular interface even if i'm enabling h particular interface ip address we can access through graphical user interface https colon that particular ip address of the interface so that is mean even we can log in through even putty as well ssh so that particular interface we can back end we can log into ssh as well so that's why whatever interface are very important to organization level so what a critical traffic wherever we are monitoring one second sorry guys yeah so whatever interfaces it's a critical to organization whatever critical traffic either it is inbound or outbound those interfaces we have to enable all these services ping https ssh and so on okay so something it is going down or something it is uh, uh, maybe some of the issues are there in that scenario we can use that particular services and we can troubleshoot or we can debug that particular interface issue so that's why we have to enable all these administrative access or services okay that is about overall interfaces okay yeah next one dns as i said every every device we have to integrate with the dns server okay so one is a management type we have to allocate second one is we have to integrate the dns server primary dns and secondary dns even for sm tool also we have to integrate even we have to integrate with the uh, uh, ids ips tool firewall tool proxy tool every tool we have to integrate why because so whenever that user is trying to access any applications in that scenario that request will go to dns server from dns server it will go to firewall also can monitor whether it is a malicious domain or whether it is a legitimate domain or fake domain or defaced domain so that's why every device we have to integrate with the dns server okay so the primary dns you can see so 96.45.45.45 whether the public dns or private dns a porting gate public public, public. Yeah. that's why i told i told you right theoretical part as well so in the dns server side so every organization they will maintain two types of dns servers one is a public dns server second private dns under public dns server once again primary and secondary and private side once again primary and secondary now we can compare theoretical and practical so now they integrated with the public dns server because it's a demo tool if they are integrating with their primary dns everybody can see that particular ip address of the dns server maybe we can go and we can do dns spoofing attack or dns amplification attack or dns poisoning attack so that's why they did not integrate with their primary dns uh, sorry private dns so they integrated with their public dns hope it's clear so now you can go you can, local domain name local domain name nothing but respect to uh, our portigate demo tool name is nothing but portigdemo.com so that is the domain name they provided so dns protocols so what are the different type of dns protocol we will use normally you know already tcp and udp okay so only one server it will support for both tcp and udp which one dns dns yeah so only dns will support for both tcp connections as well as udp connections nothing but udp online streamings like okay, online movies or online streaming and so on like a live thing everything so tcp is nothing but whatever other than any other so that is nothing tcp connection so it's a entire question guys so which server or which protocol it can support for both tcp connections as well as udp connection so that is answer is a dns server okay so dns protocols it is a dns tls and also https it is supporting for all those okay so next one dns servers 
next one yeah so dns server so in this scenario already we integrated but through which outbound outbound interface that resolution will happen so that resolution happening one of the aggregate interface they configured one of the aggregate interface right so using that particular interface so this domain request will go outside and it can validate first it will go to the respect to our uh, internal dns from internal dns it will go to our firewall firewall it will go to public dns from public dns it will go to outside of the organization this is the way how that particular flow will go think about network architecture diagram so that is the dns server interface so through which interface that the dns resolution is happening aggregate interface okay next one ipm so ip address management ipm so here they did not configure anything so for managing of ip address they are not using dns server okay so dhcp server because only three dhcp clients it is leasing purpose it has taken so what are the those uh, those three devices which three devices fortinet firewall is giving for lease time we have Port seen already metropolis i'm sorry port for sir metropolis okay, port four, yeah port four, that's correct metropolis one more uh, port switch Yes. Yes. Port four, port is port port four is nothing but desktop basically. That is desktop one. One is desktop, one is port switch, one is metropolis. That's right. Only three devices only it is giving leasing of the IP address. That's why it is not enabled IP address management. If it is more than ten thousand or more than one thousand or more than hundred, that time we should enable which IP address for what. So in that scenario, it is required. But only three. Three only. It is given the leasing time. It's not a mandatory to managing of those IP addresses. If more than hundred is there in that scenario, yes, it is required. Next one, explicit proxy. So even as I said, firewall can act as a proxy also. Nothing but proxy feature it can be implemented. So that's why firewall is as there so many feature it has. So even we see we have seen IPS, IPS. Now we are seeing proxy as well. so now proxy is a subset of firewall now it's clear right why firewall is so important to organization level because every feature it is supporting by firewall almost okay so now click on explicit web proxy no enable enable that one yeah so now you can provide the so interface through which interface that proxy is providing and what is the ip address of the proxy server from which team we have to get the proxy server host name or ip address which team we have to ask to get the host name or proxy server ip address proxy team only so in the normal network security team itself they will handle proxy as well so we have to take that particular interface what are proxy it is going on outbound connections that interface listening on the interface that is aggregated interface most of the cases we got domain resolution also happening same same place uh, next one is uh, http port number what is port number for proxy 8080 that's right 8080 proxy port number is 8080 so that port number we have to specify and uh, uh, remaining everything is by default you can keep it is and next one we have to give the save button now in that scenario even you have to add create a new new create a new yeah here we have to provide the so example name of the proxy server zscaler proxy example can you type zscaler zscaler z s c a l e r z s c a l e r what are the other proxy servers we discussed tools what are other proxy we discussed cisco cisco proxy is there what is the correct name cisco is there but what is the correct name cisco umbrella cisco, cisco umbrella. umbrella open dns that's right so zscaler open umbrella from cisco uh, next one we have citrix what else web sense blue, blue code web sense yeah blue code all these are proxy servers you are right 
So example, Z scalar and the proxy address type FQDN. So FQDN means frequently queried domain name. Nothing but host name, indirectly host name. FQDN is nothing but host name. Either you want to enter IP address or host name, which one you want to enter. So anything is fine. So now, now take proxy address. So Z scalar proxy. Example, you can type 10.10.10.1. 10 .10 .10 .10 .10 .10 port number you can change it to 8080 yeah so this is nothing but how to integrate with the proxy server now what will happen whenever user is trying to access any of the application or website maybe consider youtube.com first request will go to dns server dns server validate okay youtube is a genuine thing then request will go to fire proxy proxy can validate uh, from there, one second will go to firewall. Even firewall also will validate. So many defense in depth controls are available. One is a DNS server, second is a proxy server, third one is a firewall. Now it's clear, right? How many controls are available for everything? So many defense in depth controls are available. It's like a layer approach. Now we have to give save button. Okay. So now based on the signature based detection mechanism based on the behavioral based mechanism so respect to domain whenever the end user is trying to access in that scenario either it will block or either it will generate the alert notification so this is nothing but proxy server enabling option yeah so please next one sd van so is the, is the, this one is mainly for the van interfaces side so and also we can see the what are the different type zones we configured? And also, is there any performance issues like in latency or network bandwidth issues and so on? Most of the case, it is applicable to multiple locations. So maybe a couple of armies, they will think that every location deploying firewall is very expensive. In that scenario, what they will do? So they will export network bandwidth the traffic. They will integrate to primary site or headquarters from remote offices. So in that scenario, is there any network latency or bandwidth or jitter? Jitter is nothing but getting the voice or traffic will be delayed. That is called jitter. Okay, all these things we discussed, we studied in engineering, right? Jitter, delay, latency, all these. So that particular information, it can be provided by ST WAN. So here it can provide the server and also what is the pack. You can see down it is mentioned already. I did not see down down yeah a name and detected server and also packet loss how much percentage of the packet is dropping latency nothing but bandwidth delay and uh, jitter nothing but whatever fog packet is dropping that particular option and failure of the threshold and also recovery threshold so meaning here total enter packet dropping and resetting of the packet and also retransmission of the packet also will happen so that is nothing but SD WAN related. Okay. Static routes. So under static routes, so as I said, we will use a couple of things. Either we can use a static or a dynamic or EAGRP or RIP or OSPF and so on. But here they configure like a static route only. Nothing but from, so you can see. 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 means anyone can explain what is 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. ICMP protocols. Ports. Source static routes. Yeah. Source static routes. Yeah. Source static routes. Source IP. Source IP. What is 0.0.0? .0 .0 .0? Any. Any. Source IP, sir. Default IP. Default IP. Default only in cloud environment. What is 0 .0 .0 .0? Internet. 0 dot, 0 dot, 0 dot, any that's correct. But this scenario, destination is 0 dot, 0 dot, 0 dot. We are exposing to the public meaning here, it's internet. You can see now, WAN uplink also it's enabled. Meaning here, gateway IP address is 172, 30, 72, 254. That is our internal IP or external IP? Internal IP. Internal IP, that one is routing to where? Destination 0 .0 .0 .0. This internal is internal or external? external? Internet IP address external. So routing is going from 
so one one gateway to another gateway so how that particular route will happen so from core switch to till it will go to isp router or nothing but internet connection in this scenario so i think as per my knowledge you can see 10.89.0.0.16 is there right slash 16 from there it is reaching to internet so static route one from there it will go to the 10.8.88.1.102.0 from there it will go to 130.0 from there 210.0 from there 120.0 110.0 103.0 101.0 finally internet that is the way how that route is defined but who will give this particular routing path who will give this particular routing path which team network network, team. network routing network. team network admin team they will give that's right network admin team they will give okay. so finally from internal to external how the route is defined this is network routing and switching not switching routing even uh, we have a dedicated certification also there cisco routing and switching so in the router level they will route and finally they will give those ip addresses we have to configure we will not do anything just whatever routing ip address they given we'll copy paste it here that's all that we will define okay that information will be provided by so respect to network engineer team or network admin team so how the traffic is going on so they will define the routing part and we have to take that information and we have to configure here that's all our role next one policy routes so policy routes is there any add option here no so policy routes wise there are two types of routing we can do one is a policy based routing and second is static routing static routing already defined so that's a policy based routing is not defined so policy based routing it's not recommended one so because static routes it will provide the total overall how that particular route it will go and it will reach to the internet okay so in this policy based routing what is the incoming interface and outgoing interface and what is source and destination and even hit count nothing but how many number of sessions it is going to happen so that is hit count so that information we have to define hit count may be even routes information also that is policy based routing so here it is defined static route okay you can see there are other routes also is available rip also is available so rip whether can we use or not can we used or not in small organization we can use but yes in small organizations we can use what is the drawback of rip only 15 15 systems 0 to 15 hosts only yes correct so in our gateway routers only static routes are there 15 then we can use rip protocol now theoretical and practical are able to identify so static routes example can you, can you go back to static route can you go back to static route yeah example these routes are less than 15 or more than 15 less than 15 less than 15 yes even we can enable rip also in that scenario but if more than 15 is available rip is not supporting okay so that is a routing information protocol that is a drawback but most of the organizations they are not using that one next one yspf so yspf is open shortest path past so here uh, they have stub area a link statement so so many things are there so link uh, link statement uh, one link statement two link statement three link statement four link statement five link statement six link statement seven and so on so all these are total seven type of lss we have a uh, stub area we have totally stub area we have uh, and also uh, area of ids area 1 area 2 or area 3 master area and uh, area 1 and area 2 how we have to connect and so on that way it is showing area id Area ID, for example, area one. Type is maybe stub area. So this is completely routing part. Forget about this one. If we are using YSPF, then we have to enable this particular information. This information also can be provided by which team? Network network, network team. Network yes, network engineer or network admin guys. If we ask, then they will provide. Okay. So you can see there down cost is there. 
what is the cost here don't think about price here cost is nothing administrative distance language AD. yes administrative distance so very first class or second class i explained about uh, uh, network layer so i given source to destination so first route i provided three routers second route i provided two routers so always the uh, network layer router will choose shortest path okay so even network layer what is the definition of network layer it will provide logical addressing it can provide the best route or shortest path and also it can provide the routing path that is the network layer definition so cost is nothing but administrates to distance very less it is available whatever we will choose that one only so that distance also we have to provide here that is nothing but cost here okay anyway that information will be provided by respect to network engineer team and we have to go and we have to enable that particular all the information area id and also interface information and ad administrative distance not that ad another ad active directory and this ad is administrative distance okay once again this is ccnp routing and switching related certification thing yeah go back to bcp so bcp is a border gateway protocol so this can be used for mainly what purpose external connectivity external connectivity that's right nothing but internet external connectivity that's right so nothing but internet indirectly for internet purpose we'll use the bcp protocol but routing purpose we don't i don't think we'll use a bcp protocol only for example every organizations will they use a single internet connection or a double internet connection i mean high availability high availability high availability yes example so whether they will use both the vendors are same or different same vendors internet wise mm. internet different vendors. Vendors. different vendors different vendor that's correct so <laughs> if they will use primary connection is airtel connection secondary connection they will use a vodafone why because if they will use a both the connections same vendor in that scenario if airtel will go down obviously another link also will go down that's why they will choose two alternative vendors for the internet connectivity one is if they will choose airtel and second one is vodafone if they will choose bsnl in then they will choose vodafone in such a way they can choose the two different internet routers that information we have to provide here okay so name as well as along with that particular so whatever ip address of the respect to internet connector remote as meaning in opposite vendor wise if primary will go down second will bring into the picture okay next one okay wait na ma routing objects so routing objects i don't think we will configure anything here just you can forget about this one multicast morning i told you this one also there are different routes we can configure either static or dynamic or multicast or rip or ospf or eigrp and bgp as well right even multicast also we can configure so here we have to provide the so routing of network team then they will provide multicast ip address as well so then we have to configure here and we have to give save button that's all next one diagnostics so this one is mainly for the whenever anything if you want to do troubleshoot did we see any troubleshooting in ss tool troubleshoot option no 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 are you sure i am asking different way example you put this scan in ss tool and unfortunately scanning is not complete What will you do? Consult the man. Uh, uh, scanning of the server one not completed. What will you do? There will be option in that Nexus tool, sir. What is that option? So uh, forget about Nexus tool. Normally, what will you do? Forget about Nexus. Customer support we will take. Customer support directly. 
first of all we will go on we will see from your machine whether that particular server is reachable or not that is the first thing we will do so later what we will do so under the advanced settings we have debug option is available need to remember the tool so under the security policy configuration so we have basic compliances and also we have advanced settings is available under advanced settings we have debug option is available so after scada brute force attack malware file upload options yes, web sir. applications we have advanced option is available if we are going to advanced option we have debug option is available why will is debug option for diagnostics purpose only troubleshooting purpose in case something you are not able to identify where is the issue related to scanning so we are enabling the debug option logs will be generated back end those logs we have to send it to the support team so then they will go and they will troubleshoot what is the exact issue forget about that tool now so anyway the topic has come that's why i'm asking i am comparing with other tools as well so that you will remember easily so diagnostics is here packet capture you can see packet capture is available or not yes sir yes so this packet capture will enable most of the cases for outgoing interfaces that to internet facing or wan facing interfaces okay so can you click on enabling the maximum capture packets or interface can you click on drop down list of interfaces so example take uh, says, which one we have to choose wan up link yes wan up link we have to select select wan up link yeah maximum captured packets so only 100, 100 it will capture 100. more than 100 it will not capture okay so i think we can change that count also can you go and change to 1000 yes yeah so otherwise why we have we are putting so many things meaning here okay, as i said your enter hardware days will become completely full every time you have to go and we have to delete some of the files it's very difficult right so that's why whatever required for those interfaces only we have to do packet capture it's basically it's better to disable for all other interfaces except whatever it is facing to the wan internet or wan interface otherwise internet interface okay so here we have to enable we here we have to choose but where we can download the packet capture okay we are no 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 where we have to download so where shark we are importing okay after exporting only we'll import right without to ex import exporting how we can import on the wire shark so now what we are doing uh, this network related uh, particularly what right now we are in network tab whether it is for only for monitoring or configuration point of view configuration yes this con if this is implementation whatever right now i am teaching to you it's like a complete implementation level it's not about theoretical i mean it's not like a monitoring part it's not a supporting role it's implementation so everything whatever i'm teaching right now it's implementation dashboard is for monitoring purpose so these are all the things it's complete implementation level that's what i told you right so dashboard is for monitoring purpose next one network policies and objects security profiles vpn wifi mon wifi up to there it's a complete configurations system security fabric log and reports a monitoring purpose so this tab is also we have to remember okay and that's fine so this configuration wise yeah that's all for the total network so in network what are the different types of things we have seen interfaces configurations and also we have seen okay how to integrate dns server and we have seen how to integrate proxy server and how to enable wan and how to define the static route or a dynamic route or multicast or uh, rip or yspf and bgp and also we have seen about okay how to troubleshoot and how to enable the packet capture only configurations we have seen so coming back i asked one question right packet capture where we can export log and report a log and report tab is there right and a log and report we can go and we can download the packet capture can you click on log and report i will explain now itself otherwise you will forget it can you click on forward traffic
yeah uh, select yeah select one of the interface first one select first one yes uh, left hand side packet yeah download that one yes so that is called pre cap file is it clear now that is the pre cap file now we are imported or exported this one imported imported sir imported exported guys it's a downloaded i think what exported we have done this one where we have to import in wireshark yes that's right now it's clear right where we have to export the packet capture file configuration we have to do under the diagnostics under the network tab but packet capture export we have to do under the log and report tab so when we have to do first of all this network traffic analyzer or wireshark analysis when Actually, we have to do this analysis for analyzing the traffic when abnormal activity normal activity abnormal activity yeah not about that one just whenever in case sim tools you are not able to identify where is the exact issue whether real it is happened or not for deeper investigation we have to come back to this particular firewall then we have to export and then we have to go and we have to identify whether application layer issue or network layer issue or server issue so that time we have to not only just for malware related for any issue in case sim tool is not able to uh, not able to identify not able to do the investigation for deeper investigation we have to come back to firewall so now after coming back here whatever the ip address whatever uh, destination and source it is provided the sim tool alert notification so we have to come back to log and report tab and we have to click on add filter search button is there right search button click in click on search button yeah you can give source yeah now you can take that ip address from the sim tool sim tool alert will come right sim tool alert 10.10.10.1 for suppose select example any one of one of the ip address any one of the ip address apply now we have to go and you have to see what's going on now it's clear when we have to come back to firewall from sim tool yes sir now from source to destination what's going on even this is not only applicable to this one even uh, example one of the phishing email has come in that scenario uh, who are all clicked on that particular url link or who are all downloaded the url link so if you want to see that one so first of all we have to identify the which user that particular email it is received that ip address of the user and also you can come back to log and report tab you can filter out that particular user ip address then everything it will come what he has done whether he clicked or not and what is the action whether it blocked or not whether it is reset or packet dropped and so on everything we can see not only for that one one of the end system is got compromised and it's keep on communicating to command and control server so once you are getting the notification in the sim tool i will come to know which ip address or who is the victim ip address then victim ip address you will take then you will come to firewall log and report tab traffic tab then whatever system it is got compromised the ip address you can filter out now we can go and we can see even command control server attack ip address as well what all outbound connections are going on from that particular victim ip are you able to catch or not whatever yes. i'm saying yes, sir. yes so that's why firewall is so very important device so most of the investigations also whenever they will ask in the interview you should keep all firewall in your mind all proxy and edr tools in your mind not about which tab which tool doesn't matter so whether ibm curator or palo alto or maybe splunk or maybe portigate or sophos it doesn't matter every tool back end process same guys nobody will expect which tool you worked on they will expect what is your logic you are applying what is the process you are applying that one only they will see very rare case i will agree with you so couple of 
interview people they'll expect only dedicatedly i need only splunk tool people i need like dedicated to logarithm people i need dedicated to palalto i need dedicated to portigate and so on but even uh, big organizations like top five apple or google or microsoft and so on those companies never they'll expect any tool based interview they will expect only logic and back and process oriented only completely manual process wise that's okay we can go and we can discuss later this one yeah go back to our uh, security policies so network objects are create network is over now policies and objects yeah click on firewall policy what is the approach it will follow firewall policy validation top to bottom top to bottom that's correct top to bottom approach it will follow so for suppose when we can use this particular firewall policy option so before going to firewall policy first we can go and we can complete security profiles why because security profiles we have to implement in the firewall policies that's what i told you right morning also so first we'll go to security profile from there we'll go to policies why because security profile is a subset of policy okay even same thing even in nessus tool also first we created policy there after we created rule same thing applicable to here as well yeah click on antivirus so there are three different types of okay so policy i mean security profiles are configured so one is a default one is antivirus monitor one is a wifi default so what is meant by this one which one is a default one which one which one is a customized one which one is a default rule when you're purchasing a firewall which out of these three which one will come by default last one was wifi default last one no wrong no scan which one middle, middle one. one yeah middle one default it will come wifi default they created customized rule basically customized profile for dedicated to wifi so whenever you are purchasing by default antivirus security profile will come web filter profile will come video filter will come dns will come app control web control next one is file filter everything it will come by default but by default whatever they provide maybe it is not matching to my requirement in that scenario we can go and we can create our customized security profile so right now we don't have add option unfortunately why because why why we don't have add option here demo tool read demo only. tool only because of that reason it is only read only yes it is a read only option that's correct it's a read only option we don't have write option if we have write option yes we can create even rule as well for i mean profile configurations as well yeah can you click on uh, default second one double click yeah by default this one now what is the profile it is by default i mean antivirus profile we are discussing so name of the profile is a default next one is comments scan file and block viruses whether it will block only virus whether it will block only virus oh no all malware malware yes all where all malware category of the file that's right now you can see antivirus scan block so meaning here whenever any malicious activity is there in the file after scanning it has to block automatically even adr also will do it will uh, doing same thing but it's like additional control it is this is in the dedicated to network layer so that is on the host level this is on the network level okay so next one is a feature set flow based or proxy based so flow based meaning here so what a traffic it is coming like a net flow data and so on proxy based meaning here you are integrating the proxy then we have to select as a proxy based so now coming back on the inspected protocols http http or https drive by downloads so drive by downloads through which protocol drive by downloads through which protocol http 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 or https drive by downloads are clear or not clear next one smtp pop3 imap phishing email emails yeah phishing emails simple mail transfer protocol 
post office protocol imap what the port number smtp 25 25 25 top 3 one one zero seven one forty three one forty three one one zero seven one one zero imap imap one four three one four three one ten one ten one forty three so email phishing email malware attachments so second criteria is matched or not so what is the next option so one is driver downloads we discussed in the malware theoretical part second one phishing email attachment third one silent silent thoughts through pen drives through my old devices through pen drives ftp file transfer protocol so copying something through pen drives or copying from one device to another device so ftp cfa cfs mapi and ssh all these are file based so all three things are covered right one is a drive by download option is covered through http and phishing email attachments via pop3 imap and smtp and the next one through remote devices so ftp cfs file systems imap sorry mapi and also ssh so now everything we covered whatever theoretically we discussed how the malware will enter into the automation level sir cifs means sir cifs is one of the file system i forgot the full name it's a file system related okay sir uh, let me google it give me one second yeah cifs yeah common internet file system common internet file system it's a file related that's what i told you right it's a common internet file system so that is nothing but through remote devices kind of thing yeah so this is the way so normally how we can identify the malware all those type of malware things it can be blocked by the firewall okay so even where we discussed about in the adr tool which policy we can created for malware blocking which policy we created under the sofa cdr Categories. Which policy we created and so for CDR for malware blocking? Canon block server. Which policy we created malware blocking in so for CDR tool? So for CDR tool is completed for both offline as well as online guys. Threat protection. Threat protection. That's right answer. Threat protection. so threat protection we discussed about ransomware that's what i told you please play with the tool then only you can remember all this if you don't play with the tool then you will not remember all this you will forget okay so threat prevention there that's correct so ransomware we discussed and uh, even uh, through remote devices and uh, drive by downloads and so so other options as well okay please compare with other tools so that it is easy to remember okay so you can see next one is apt protection options what is apt advanced prevention threats advanced advanced persistent threats yeah advanced persistent threats whether the attack or whether the solution it is the uh, from the attacker point of view solution yeah. it is a solution it is attacker it is attack yeah, sir atp solution sir apt is attack or solution apt attack sir atp solution sir APT yes solution. that's right apt is an attack example of apt groups eternal romance eternal blue and eternal romance yes eternal blue eternal romance cha cha regila all this so apt is a attack from the hacker so atp is advanced threat prevention that's what i told right next generation firewall has a capability of atp as well whenever any unknown attacks it will come even it can identify and it can generate the alert or it will block that particular activity as well so nothing but it's one type of machine learning mechanism so now you can see control okay so disarm and also recognizance re reconstructions of the files next one is a treat windows executables so whenever any windows related files are executing those things you can suspect as a so completely unknown behavior of the files and suspect as a malware and generate a 
error not error alert okay so next one internal and also at internal attachment as a virus so whenever any attachments are coming in that scenario that one also you can scan and suspect that one also malware in case any malicious activity is available send files to porti sandbox what is porti sandbox morning we discussed environment it's like r and d research and development related it can do static analysis of the malware and dynamic analysis of the malware so within the portinet company itself so finally they can give the verdict either it is suspected as a malware or not that is called porti sandbox okay so that is about porti sandbox so it can whenever any file is coming through either drive downloads or phishing email attachments and so on that file it will go and it can sus it will it will do the scanning and it can do the static analysis of the malware and dynamic analysis of the malware finally it will give the verdict so if that file contains the malware then it will block that particular activity and if file doesn't it contains any malware it's like a clean file in that scenario it will show like allowed okay so that is porti sandbox how much time it will take to identify or scan the file 3 minutes it will take not minutes it will take less than 1 minute okay it will take less than 1 minute so before 5 years back it is taking 15 minutes 15 minutes but, but now it reduced to less than a minute because if it is taking 15 minutes by that time everything it get compromised okay so next one is scan strategy okay so whether it is inline method or post to transfer so oh, it's better down. inline online itself is a better option <laughs> file types so suspicious file or all supported files so we 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 know we we want to scan right, for yeah. every file it's not about only suspicious files you know better every file you can send it to the porti sandbox so all supported files so next one do not submit file matching types okay do not submit file matching file name okay use uh, porti sandbox database okay so these are by default you can keep it as it is okay next one virus outbreak prevention what is mean virus outbreak prevention guys outbreak Block. what blocking mean outbreak blocking of the virus blocking of the virus blocking of the virus first what is outbreak forget about prevention outbreak virus outbreak what do you mean a virus outbreak getting released destroying destroying yeah getting destroying released. only so yeah it's a damaging not only one machine but multiple machines so through networking protocols so if one system is getting compromised it will outbreak to other system as well through replications like a worm so here virus means don't only, only think about don't think about only virus it's like a malware basically that is malware outbreak prevention so in that scenario so if one system is getting compromised through networking protocols or through lateral movement if it is moving that particular malware to other machines in that scenario automatically it has to block so that is mean by this one that much in depth is there single sentence okay so use porti got outbreak prevention databases for that one either you can use a porti uh, porti gate database nothing but sandboxing environment otherwise you can use external malware block list you have to integrate threat intelligence piece from the third party vendors like uh, ibm exports or osint and so on use ems threat feeds so how can you identify whether really those things are causing the outbreak prevention or not so regularly example as i said the russian ukraine war is going on in that scenario so any ukraine country or russia country or south korea or north korea or pakistan or afghanistan whatever it may be 
if they are trying to do any cyber attacks so regularly we will receive the cyber threat intelligence feeds so threat intelligence feeds meaning here malicious hash values malicious ip addresses malicious uh, domain names malicious url links those things if are blocking in firewall level proxy level and edr level and also dns server level so we are blocking proactively this is called proactive threat hunting so that is mean by this one so proactively if are integrating threat intelligence feeds we'll get all those threat intelligences and we'll integrate it to our protect firewall so then finally it will prevent that particular activity as a outbreak prevention so if it's better to enable everything okay so that is about antivirus go back to web filter so web filter see, that's what so default always you can go because automation to automation this requirement will vary so we can discuss about only default okay click on default so web filter also called it as a url filtering also called it as a content filtering also called bright cloud filtering so there are different options are available okay so this this is i told you several times block listing and white listing based on business requirement okay so now name of the respective web filter is a default uh, comments so next one is uh, feature proxy based or pro based so next one is there are five different types of category of the filtering one is allowed next one is a monitor next one is a block next one warning and next one is authenticate in one of the interview they asked this one in one of the interview they asked this much in depth question in portigate web filtering or url filtering option what are the different types of actions we can see what the answer what the answer hello monitor block warning yes whether will anybody can expect this type of interview questions no sir not at all but one of the interview so they want to clarify whether this person really genuine or whether they really this guy has a knowledge or not so that guy is almost working for more than 15 years so that guy is asked about this question so in portigate firewall under security profile under web filtering option what are the actions it is we can configure what are the actions we can configure we can configure allow monitor block warning and authenticate okay if you will say this answer itself then he will select absolutely why because this much in depth person i mean this much in depth nobody knows basically even you are working for 2 to 3 years as well okay so that means you are playing with the tool then only you can remember all these okay that's fine so coming back here categories of this particular filtering first of all categories so always allow always deny custom one custom two so many categories the local category they define but not that one come down potentially liable drug abuse in the class also i told you several times drugs related nudity related hacking related uh, next one is alcohol related social networking related uh, next one porn related adult content related so terrorist related and so on so these are all the groups guys even this one where where did we discuss this one in where india. did we discuss this option in india in india, in india to which option which policy which policy web, web application sir web application option is there app control app control that's right answer application control or web control as well both the both the places web control and application control options we have seen same thing is applicable to here as well you can see drugs it's allow and you can see external groups extremist groups they given block so i can put most of the cases a block only okay so child sexual abuse it's a block they mentioned allow by default they provide this one according to our requirement now we have to change okay understood so this is nothing but okay so what exactly so we have to allow and we have to block yeah next one adult and maturity content next to category okay so dating so on so on alcohol yeah sports 
social networking now which which device can block whenever the user is trying to access any website first case is a proxy next case is a firewall third case is edr tool okay so that is web filter guys so which websites we have to follow block list and which websites we have to allow list this is category wise so alcohol under alcohol so many brands and so many things will come in the similar sports category under sports it will come so many things under news category so many things it will come so entire category wise they they provided okay yeah so in case in case example if i want to allow social networking website uh, not enter category i want to allow only facebook and remaining everything i want to block in my organization but here if we are blocking enter social networking websites whether will be able to access the facebook application did you understand what i'm what did i say i'm repeating once again example in my organization or in your organization you want to enable only facebook but remaining twitter instagram um, next one uh, youtube and so on you have to block linkedin and so on you have to block but you are blocking entire category where, where is that option granular op option where is available policies policies top to top to bottom top to bottom we will be doing it yeah top to bottom so at the, yes, the top we, we will be do that option yeah What is this theoretical that. part? One more thing I said in theoretical way. In, in, so what is the difference between Palo Alto and other vendor firewalls? SP3 processing, sir. SP3 processing. Second one is a port and port protocol based. So whether it is blocking based on the application wise? Yes, sir. Yes. Palo Alto firewall. Yes, sir. Palo Alto will Palo Alto be. Palo Alto is but uh, we are discussing port ticket. No, sir. No. No. Yes. In that scenario, the one of the drawback. Now, two times we have to do configurations. Correct. Two policies we have to configure. But if we are going to parallel to directly with one policy, we can complete everything. Yes, sir. It's a little bit complicated. Did you understand theoretical and practical now? Yes, yes, sir. Not only that one. You can see one more down. Application control option is available. So, additionally, we have to configure application control as well. now we can block enter social networking websites here under application control we can enable only facebook so in such a way we can configure so it's like additional feature or additional configuration we have to do but palo alto side there is no thing straight forward directly we can go and we can block facebook itself so that's why one of the main key difference so in between palo alto and other vendor firewalls so other vendor firewalls is a blocking based on port and protocol but palo alto is blocking based on the app id application id even this one also we can block that much granularity is there but problem here is additional configurations we have to do additional policies we have to configure okay so that's why the, the other firewalls are little bit complicated as compared to palo alto okay so that is about, about web filter next one video filter so video filter meaning here so example in youtube i i am allowing watching youtube videos but i want to provide specific to only up to 1 gigabyte file only movies only it, every user can accept i mean every user can watch but other than that everybody sh everything should be blocked it automatically that we can that one we can do under video filter did you understand what it is say so if example one of the user is trying to see movie or whatever it may be that contains 2 gb file in the youtube file wise so but if everybody in the organization is using 2 gb file network bandwidth consumption it will go finally all the application our business application will not work will not work properly and i should not disappoint even employee as well in that scenario what we have to do up to maybe 500 mb whatever files users can accept nothing but users can watch and more than 500 mb automatically it has to block it so that video filter option also we can do it here is it clear or not yes sir yeah that much filtering option also available that is video filter next one dns filter 
So DNS filter click on default. So here, which domains we have to allow and which domains we have to block domain wise, almost it is equivalent to uh, app con web control and app control as well. So you can see here, alternate beliefs, abortion, adult materials, advocacy, organization. So these are all the different dating and, uh, and so nudity, gambling. So which domains we have to allow and which domains we have to block whenever user is giving domain request. DNS filter is a subset of web filter as well as the application control yeah. filter. Yeah. Yeah, next one. Application control. So default. Now you can go and see. Can you click on social networking websites? Is there any social SN social networking? Social media. Yeah, click on social media. Yeah, so whether you want under social media also, we can see 136 are there. Out of 136, 32 is showing as internet. What is meant by that one? You can see that cloud symbol is there. Internet symbol. Yes. No, not there. Yes. After 136 beside, 32 beside, yeah. 116. Sir, 116. Yeah, 116. Sorry. 116. Beside 32 is there. Yes, sir. Cloud. Cloud that application. Nothing but SaaS based application. Out of one, 116 applications, so 32 applications are belong to SaaS based. Like a service now. Also, uh, S, I mean, SOPO CDR, Office 365. All those are cloud based applications, right? SaaS based. Remaining out of 32, I mean, out of 116. If I do minusing minus 32, how much it will come? Um, 84, sir. 84. 86. 86. 84. Sorry, 80, 84. Yeah, 84. 84 are on premise application. Okay. So now here we have to go and we have to enable specific application itself. So if you want to enable only specific application, so Web control and also application control, both we have to configure. But other vendor firewalls, so only one policy is sufficient. I mean, Palalto is one policy is sufficient. Okay. So the example, maybe enter social media I want to block, just you can click on block. Yeah, all social media networks, LinkedIn, YouTube, G Gmail, Yahoo Mail, everything will be blocked automatically. Okay. So this is nothing but app control. Next one, IPS. Intrusion prevention. Intrusion prevention means IPS. Intrusion prevention system, S is not there, intrusion prevention. So here you can see name and also comments. IPS signatures. What is signature? What is signature? Already well. What is signature? Already well known. Yeah, already well known and already for every attack, one of the ID number is append by each and every vendor and they will maintain the database that is called signature. Okay, so now you can go and you can click on, yeah, so details, it is showing as a action is default, packet log is disabled, okay, come down, we should have the, yeah, can you click on right, yeah, botnet CNC, this is what I want to say. In, it is one of the use case as well in uh, IDS IPS. I told you already. One of the server got compromised. One of the end user system is got compromised, and it keep on communicating to command and control server. So this one we discussed under network IDS and network IPS. One of the end user system or server got compromised, and it is keep on communicating to command and control server. This is the use case case. Botnet CC. CNC means Command and, command and control server. So whenever any command and control webs, websites, I mean, so botnet sites or Trojan sites or malicious sites, end users are trying to access. In that scenario, it has to block it automatically. Instead of disable, block is better option. OK. Can you click on right side view IPS signatures? Right now, how many signatures it is supporting, we'll see. No, no, right side, right side. Under NGFW primary down. No, no, right side. Yeah, down. 
Yeah, click on that one. Currently, it is supporting how much that one? 15,017. Am I right? Yeah. 15,017 signatures right now, Portigate vendor is supporting. So all those are malicious websites. You can see down, IP signatures down. Out of that one, severity wise high, critical, medium, low, informational. So server side, how many? Client side, how many? Voice side, how many? So all these signatures are there, right? Two wire wireless router dot XSRF. Yeah, that's fine. So graphical user, uh, I mean, bar chart representation is fine. IPS signatures, you can see here, two wire dot wireless dot router dot XSRF. XSRF is one type of offline case. What is XSRF attack? OWASD. Yeah, what is full form? Open web application. Cross site cross request forgery. Cross site request forgery. CSRF XSRF. Okay. So so that is one of the malicious website. Come down. You can see so many things. All these are IPS signature. Whenever user is trying to access these type of web three com also dangerous website. You can see they will give each and every website. Yeah. Can you go and can you put on one of the browser? Yeah, click on that one. That's fine. Yeah, you can see here which type summary of the respective website. So this is related to buffer overflow attack. Okay. Uh, summary, severity, impact. What will happen when you are doing this particular axing this particular application? System compromise and remote code execution will happen and Finally, attack will gain unauthorized access. So what the recommendation it is providing? So currently, we are not aware what vendor supported patch for this issue. Even vendor doesn't have the, any patch update. That's why they block this particular activity. What is the signature ID number here? 30316. Yes, 30316. So signature is nothing but every vendor, it will maintain for every attack, one of the ID number that is called signature ID. It's for known attack, basically. For unknown attacks, whether signature ID will be there. First no. of all, whether we call signature, no. no. That's right. No, no, no. Yeah. So this is about signature, guys. So even an IDR tool, it is working on signature based. So even IDS, IPS also signature based detection and also I mean behavioral pattern. So this is completely only working on signature based detection mechanism. Okay, so right now Portigate is supporting for 15,017 signature. Whenever similar type of attacks is coming to the automation level, so Portigate firewall it will verify the respective signature from the vendor database and automatically it will block. You can see the action or the action block. Okay. And target also they are showing it is for server related and it is Linux related and so on. So that information also they are providing. So from attacker side, where they will target recognizance, recon, selection of the target by doing RD. Okay. That is about intrusion prevention. Next one file filter. So which files we have to enable and which files we have to block? What are the dangerous files? Can you give one of the dangerous file name? Icar, sir. Icar is a website. Icar is a website. I'm asking in general way, what is the dangerous file? File name or file category? Dot .exe. Dot .exe. Dot .exe is Excel, right? It, why it is a dangerous one? Dot .dll. And also 7Z. Zip also, sir? Zip also, yes, possible. Yes. Yeah, 7Z, yes. 7Z is not 7Z only, yeah. 7Zip dot DLL. So next one, Zip files. These are a couple of dangerous files. Most of the organizations, they'll block these files as well. And one more thing is there, WinRare. Rare file category also there. It will encrypt so many things and we have to extract all those files. Okay. So 
here we have to go and we have to identify so which file we have to allow in our organization level which file we have to block that's called file filter you are thinking that maybe 7z is very dangerous for my organization whenever any user is trying to download 7z related files automatically it has to block so then i can put category of the file name is you can see file type last one file type action and after that file type yeah so file type i will choose a 7z and action i will put a block and in this similar dot dll i will put action as a block so that is where how we can define okay that is about file filter next one voice or ip vo ip so voice or ip is a dedicatedly applicable to nowadays everyone using a uh, uh, microsoft teams for calling so even slack or google meet and so on skype for business and so on but uh, 10 years back these options are available so oh. forget about that one even no. couple of companies now so they will use especially bpo sector for every desk they will use one voice or ip call do you know that one voice or ip related atnt and cisco related boxes will be there so for calling purpose so this voice or ip is related to that particular thing so whenever any voice things it is showing as okay i mean uh, over conflict over uh, application this one also we have to integrate basically voice or ip traffic also we have to integrate it to firewall then it will monitor that particular activity as well whether overlap is happening cross functional wise another person is speaking so even those things also it can identify okay you can see call setup also there so example maybe couple of people even uh, they will speak more than one hour they will call their home and they will speak with their i mean home people as well normally company will provide for professional purpose but they will use for personal purpose as well okay so in that scenario so call setup we have to put only for maybe 30 minutes or 10 minutes and so on automatically when that session is completed we have to start once again okay so that is for voice or ip related next one web application firewall waf so now we have seen explicit proxy malware scanning we have seen application control web control and also dns filtering and also we have seen ips as well even we are seeing waf also how many features firewall is doing guys so next generation firewall yes so that's why it is called next generation firewall in couple of interview you'll ask next generation firewall is a layer 7 firewall or layer 4 firewall what is the difference between next generation firewall and waf what is the answer next generation firewall will for seven layers okay then waf fourth layer only control based on application layer application layer only application layer. waf is dedicatedly ah. applicable to layer number 7 application layer attacks only it will block but next generation firewall it can block up to layer number 7 as well including network and transport layer as well so now we can say wap is a subset of next generation firewall is it clear it's entire question guys yes, what is the difference between wap and next generation firewall what is the difference between firewall and ids and ips what is the difference between firewall and proxy all these are entire questions okay so yeah next one as yeah can you go out and click on, yeah that's fine you can see here disable cross site scripting attack offline people know about all these attacks for online people already we started application security so within a week i'll complete all these attacks so cross site scripting attack so it's one type of application layer 7 attacks as per os top 10 it's one of the dangerous attack as well attacker will inject untrusted scripts into the where our input validation is required finally he will see whether application is vulnerable or not and then finally he will gain unauthorized access by exploiting those scripts that is called cross site scripting attack so one second under cross site scripting attack we have three types one is stored reflected and also dom based 
so that is so web application even firewall can block cross site scripting attacks as well next one is cross site scripting extended one so next one is sql injection attack or sql injection attack so attacker will inject sql queries wherever input validation is required and he will see whether application is vulnerable or not and finally if application is vulnerable he will exploit the application and he will compromise back end database related to sql that's called sql injection attack that is also wise top 10 generic attacks trojan attack next one is information disclosure known exploit so many are there one click or click jacking uh, cryptographic control insecure design okay so so many are there so it will block all those but it will not do full fledged web it will do basic web okay basic functional functional functionality only it will do so we it is showing only i think more than 10, more, only 10 less than 10 but web it will do more than 50 as well every attack it can block okay so that is about web next one So SSL, SSH inspection. So nothing but in the application level, wherever our purchased CS certificate or on the server side, wherever SSL, TLS certificates we are using or even SSH we are using, it will scan that one as well. Can you click on default? Or uh, you can go for uh, no inspection, yes. Yeah, you can see here, it will scan SSL certificates and it can see, is there any outdated SSL versions we are using? So in between, this is one second part of top, topic of cryptographic control, symmetric and asymmetric, and also SSL TLS mutual authentication. Okay, so it can inspect, is there any weak ciphers we are using? So like a RC4, RC5, and also, is there any certificates going to expire very soon? So which certificates we have to enable? You can see everywhere. CS certificate, it is available. Inspection method, it is there. So it will scan entire SSL TLS certificates and it can identify is there any poodle attack is available or heart bleed attack is available or open SSL related attacks is available or outdated versions we are using. It can throw error. Are not error in the sense alert. If you are putting block, it will block. If you are putting monitor, it will generate an alert. That is called SSL SSH inspection. Okay, so you will come to know this one. Okay, after completing uh, offline people know about all this. So because they are aware of what is SSL TLS certificates, what is purchase CS certificate, what is outdated versions of SSL version, what are the current version of TLS versions we are using. So firewall can scan even whatever certificates we purchased, a self-sense certificate, and what are the versions we are using, what is weak ciphers and strong ciphers. It can scan and it can identify. Inspection is nothing but scanning of those certificates and providing when it is going to expire and so on. That is SSL inspection. Yeah, next one. Application signature. So application signatures it is once again it's a part of application control right now how many applications it is supporting actually porting it is copied palo alto now so even port palo alto is supporting more than 2156 or 2500 plus so currently porting it is supporting 2184 2184 also combinations in palo alto that is called app id here it is different combinations. So currently it is supporting 2194. So do you think that in all over the world, only we have 2184 applications? Yes. More than five. It's more than that. Okay. So in this scenario, it is a category basically. All these applications signatures like a category. And each and every application also, you can see popularity of the application and a technology based application and the category of the application uh, you can see second one i think uh, it's email 
okay email related so that is a browser based application and popularity it is out of five it is a three and it's a medium risk can you come down we can see whether high risk application is available can you come down a little bit yeah red color wherever it is you can stop there red color yeah you can see here so vpn so amaze vpn it is one of the open source vpn it's a dangerous vpn risk is very high so we have a lot of open vpns are there something even uh, in our mobile also couple of websites we cannot access in that scenario we can download op open vpn and we can try to access those websites okay so same thing is applicable to here also amaze vpn is one of the dangerous vpn okay yeah so these are all the different types of application signatures it is supporting by so our uh, fortigate firewall next one ips yeah so already we discussed ips signature i have shown there itself it is repeating 15017 it's fine next one so web rating override sometime what will happen is so whenever end user is clicking on the malicious url link it will take to deface website fake website malicious website it will override the existing website it will go to the malicious website in that scenario it should be blocked it automatically so that is mean by this particular so override at least it has to generate the alert notification you should not override existing genuine application so example i accessed google.com maybe attacker is injected some of maybe attacker is compromised dns spoofing and on behalf of the google.com he is responded like a malicious google.com website nothing but it's overriding of the existing website now on behalf of the google server he will respond back and it is overriding in that scenario automatically this type of alert should be generated whenever it's override so that is mean by this one yeah next one web profile overrides so first one is web rating wise this is web profile wise so if you are grouping of the different types of websites that is called web profile okay so these are all the security profiles we have to configure after configuring these security profiles we have to implement those profiles in the where we have to implement security policies policies and objects yeah. were right so just now we discussed about only default organization to organization it will vary maybe we can use default also what our vendor is saying otherwise you can use your own customized one so customized one how we can do just we have to click on add button and we have to uh, see what type of websites we have to allow what type of domains we have to allow what type of files we have to monitor what type of files we have to monitor everything we have to make a customized one customized meaning here based on our requirement we will configure that is called customization okay that's all for today guys so thank you so much for bearing me and uh, so almost more than to us so really appreciate for that one okay uh, why because why i explain this much maybe tomorrow once again the tool will give trouble that's why okay so tomorrow we will see proxy and objects and then we can go for vpn then we can go for other tabs as well okay please go and play with this tool this is my request not only this tool whatever tool we are discussing okay uh, so do you have any queries thank you so much nasim really appreciate for your sharing of the screen so do you have any queries uh, sir plus yes please yes please uh, uh, what is it called sir what is the use of uh, web application firewall when a uh, next generation firewall is blocking all seven layer attacks then what is the that's what use? i said no yeah that's what i said so can you go to web application firewall na simon click on default 
so whether it is blocking all the attacks whatever we discussed theoret i mean theoretical way some allowing and some blocking where is buffer overflow attack where is csr csrf is there where is ssrf attack where is uh, one click one uh, click jocking attack where is uh, uh, man in the middle attack whatever those attacks it is okay. doing basic functionality only not full fledged functionality okay yeah it okay. only as i said already i told you it is covering only 10 attacks but we have more than 100 attacks also there under application security but it is not covering everything what are important was top 10 attacks are there it is covering those attacks only but remaining attack is not blocking so that's why we have to use a dedicated web application firewall okay sir it's a very good question thank you so much amar thank you sir any other hi sir i have a query regarding yes. http proxies why do we need uh, need to use additionally http proxies in firewall yeah why we have to use it's like additional defense in depth control layer approach in case firewall is not able to block i mean proxy is not able to block that request will go to firewall as well so firewall also will do inspection so defense in depth control is another layer approach if one layer of the control is bypassing example proxy is bypassing then it will go to request to firewall firewall we enable that particular option then firewall also can do the scanning so then it can block that particular activity that's why then why they will name it as a http proxy instead of proxy so we actually why because proxy is nothing but it will act as a gateway or bridge between user and application application how what is another name for application web right application another name is web so web which protocol it will use http and http yes that's why okay great thank you sir and Welcome. also here we will uh, use uh, circuit level gateways because of uh, reason behind that to allowing the traffic and blocking the traffic only main for firewall right yes that's correct so as i said next generation firewall we discussed about generations of the firewalls what is packet filtering circuit level gateways application level gateway and utm and so on what stateful inspection as well what are existing features we have all those features it is there in the next generation firewall including deep packet inspection as well you are right okay thank you sir you are welcome any other okay guys thank you so much once again thank you so much for bearing with me for taking two hours class and uh, have a great dinner and a good night thank you sir thank, thank you sir. Yes, sir thank you sir good night sir